In the last video, we talked about airway anatomy. In this video, we're going to take it a step further and talk about our airway innervation. What are the nerves that supply sensation and motor function to all parts of our airway? So the way that we're going to do this and the way that I like to think about this is I like to draw a border from our epiglottis. So our epiglottis is this hook-like structure right over here. I divide the epiglottis or I make a border at the epiglottis so that everything above the epiglottis above epiglottis is more superior. Everything below epiglottis is more inferior. So this helps in the sense that it helps us break down the different cranial nerves that supply sensation to both of these aspects, sensation and motor function. So above the epiglottis, the cranial nerves at play are going to be cranial nerve 5, or your trigeminal nerve, and cranial nerve 9, or your glossopharyngeal nerve. Below the epiglottis, sensation and motor function is going to be carried out solely by cranial nerve 10, which is our vagus nerve. And we'll probably split this video into two, one talking about sensation above the epiglottis, and then we'll go ahead and talk about below the epiglottis, just to keep things, just to keep things brief. So focusing on above the epiglottis, our trigeminal nerve and our glossopharyngeal nerve are going to be involved in sensation. So let's start here with the one of the initial parts of our airway, which is the nasal mucosa. The nasal mucosa the anterior portion at least is going to be supplied by the ophthalmic branch of our trigeminal nerve of cranial nerve 5. So I'm putting here V or 5 sub 1. Now the posterior portion, the posterior portion of our nasopharynx here is going to be supplied by the maxillary branch of our cranial nerve 5, which is going to be labeled as V2 or 5-2. That is a subset of our cranial nerve 5. And because you're seeing this pattern of cranial nerve 5 sub 1, cranial nerve 5 sub 2, the third branch of our cranial nerve 5 is going to supply the anterior two-thirds the anterior two-thirds of our tongue. And that is going to be labeled V3. V3 is the mandibular division of our trigeminal nerve. And that is providing sensation to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. So then, now we have one more nerve to focus on in this upper portion above our epiglottis, and that is our glossopharyngeal nerve. So our glossopharyngeal nerve innervates the posterior third of the tongue, as you can probably imagine. And not only that, but it also supplies or provides a sensation to part of our soft palate, our pharynx, and our tonsils, which I haven't drawn here. But you get the picture, you get the picture that the glossopharyngeal nerve or cranial nerve number nine is supplying sensation to basically the, the, the bottom and back portion or the inferior and posterior portion of our airway that is above the epiglottis. So to quickly summarize here, our airway innervation above the epiglottis involves cranial nerve five and cranial nerve nine. We have the nasopharynx, the, in, the anterior portion of our nasopharynx is supplied by the ophthalmic branch of our trigeminal nerve. The posterior portion of our nasopharynx is supplied by the uh, maxillary branch of our cranial nerve 5. And the anterior two-thirds of our tongue is supplied by the mandibular branch of our cranial nerve 5. Our glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, supplies the sensation to the posterior third of the tongue, the tonsils, the pharynx, 
and the back portion of the soft palate. In the next video, we'll get into the innervation below the epiglottis.